Hi friends, it's Lisa Hetrick. Welcome to my YouTube channel and blog. I'm so grateful you're here with me today. I'm super excited to share part two of the Mixed Brand Watercolor Palette series. In this series, I'm swatching and sharing insight into the color families that I've chosen after many, many years of experimenting and playing with watercolors. I want to note that choosing the colors for your palette takes time, practice and it's very much a personal decision as it can be an investment over time. You do not have to use the exact colors that I'm sharing in my video series to enjoy watercoloring. I'm simply sharing what I use and I hope you will find this series inspirational. If you haven't already, please check out part one in the series where I swatched and shared the yellows that are on my palette. I'll link up the video in the notes so that you can watch. So let's dive into the reds. Okay, so here is my swatch and you can see that I have my reds in my palette in the upper left hand corner. So I have five reds that are on my palette that start to skew over into pinks. So let's just dive into it. So the first red on my palette is from Windsor and Newton and it is Windsor Red. It's a warm, mid-rangey red color and it's got a little bit of an orange undertone to it. It's, um, I just really, really like it. It is, when you think of red, it is that red color. It's pigment PR254, so it's a single pigment color, which I really enjoy. I like to have a lot of single pigment colors on my palette because when I use those colors to mix with other colors, I don't get mud and I get really clear, transparent colors. I really, really like this color because as you can see on my palette, I don't have an orange. So I have two reds that skew a little bit with a little bit of orange in it. Um, to kind of satisfy the needs that I want for floral painting. And plus I can mix up an orange very, very easily. So um, I really enjoy this Windsor Newton Red. It's a staining color, so sometimes it's a little bit hard to lift off, but I don't really have any problems with it. And like I said, I really do like to mix it with other colors and it really does give me that red that I really, really want on my palette. Next up in the reds is Daniel Smith Pyrrole Scarlet, and this is also a single pigment color. It's PR255. Um, Pyrrole Scarlet is a permanent color. It's kind of semi-transparent to semi-opaque, and I really kind of enjoy that. I like some colors to have the ability to be more opaque and some colors to be a little bit more transparent. This color is sort of like a fire engine red. And again, because I don't have an orange on my palette, this red skews kind of orange and just kind of gives me that look and feel um, if I want to get more of a red like orange. And I like to use this color to mix with other colors as well. And you can see that I can get a lot of different values of this color. So I can really get kind of a light orangey red by just adding some more water. The color, the Daniel Smith brand disperses very, very well in um, water. So it's just, it's a really good brand to use. I just really enjoy the Daniel Smith brand because it does disperse. The colors just disperse really evenly in water and they're just a joy to work with. Next up on my palette is the Sennelier Alizarin Crimson Lake and it is a single pigment PR83. And I really enjoy this color. I love the Sennelier brand because it has honey in it. So it's a very, very juicy color. It is a very cool, red. So unlike um, Pyro Scarlet and Windsor Red, the Sennelier Elizabeth and Crimson is more of a cool red. So it's kind of a clear ruby red and it has a little bit of a maroon in there. You can see underneath in that color. And you can see when I was picking out my reds, I was just really kind of debating a lot of different kinds of reds, but I really like this Sennelier Alizarin Crimson because it does have that bluish undertone to it. So in mass tone here, where I'm just kind of putting it on at full strength, you can see that it's got a little bit of that blue in there. But when you, um, 
when you put add a little bit more water and change the value of the color, it really um, can give you a really nice good tinting strength here. So you can get different kinds of um, variations of that color. I enjoy using it as a mixing color, but I also really like using it to glaze. So I will use this color a lot in layers on my floral paintings. Holy smokes, friends. Okay, this color, the Daniel Smith Quinacridone Coral, is my favorite color ever. Out of any color on my palette, the Quinacridone Coral is my favorite. I'm a pink girl, always have been, and this color brings me the most joy. I just love it. Okay, so it is a single pigment color. It is PR209, and what I really love about it, it is an intense quinacridone color. It is very, very clear, and it has a red tinge with some pink and some orange. So I love it. It's just very, very transparent, but one of my favorite, favorite things to do with it is to... Um, add more water. When you do this, when you add more water to quinacridone coral and you change the value of that color, you can get some of the most beautiful shades of pink from a clear red to a coral to a pastel pink. I just love this color and I don't, they just don't make it too big enough for me because I use it all the time. And I really do like to add white to it sometimes to give it some more opacity and kind of use it like a gouache. But I really love this color because it's vivid, it's clear, and it's intense. Okay, the last red on my palette starts to skew more into my pinks. So this is Daniel Smith Quinacridone Red. It is a single pigment color, PV19, and I really, really like this color. It's a true, like, medium staining red. It's very, very transparent. Um, I really like this color because on my palette, it starts to skew over in to where my pinks are. And it's a great middle color here. So you can see that when you add water to it, you can really change the value of the color and just start to get a more red pink look and feel. One of my favorite things to do is drop a little bit of Naples yellow into this color and I can create a really nice peach and I just love that. Okay, so let's take a look at all of the red swatches on the palette and you can start to see now that they have dried um, what they look like at full strength and what they look like when water is added and you're changing the value of the color. So you can see that I start with some reds and I get some oranges and we start to move over to more of a blue red. And then by the time you hit to the Quinny Coral and the Quinny Red, you start to move more into the pinks. And um, so for me, this is a great range of reds and this is a great range of reds to use for florals. Um, it, it is a good mix and it's mixed brand here. So we've got three from Daniel Smith, one from Sennelier and one from Windsor Newton. And they all just play so well together. And I just really enjoy this set of five colors. Okay, in part one, I shared my favorite watercolor palette by Magello, and this is the Bulletproof Glass Palette uh, for watercolor, and I just wanted to review it here just in case you've missed part one, and I have that linked up um, down below as well, but what I really love about this palette is A, it fits all the colors that I love. I have 36 colors on this palette and it just holds them all very, very well. I do have a free swatching template uh, for this particular palette. You'll see the link in the notes below. And I'm also showing how I store all the tubes in one container so that I can keep everything for this palette in one place. The paper that I used today for the swatches is from the Bee Paper Company. It's 100% cotton watercolor paper, and I really enjoy using it for swatching. In part three of this watercolor series, I'm going to be sharing the pinks that are on my palette. I hope you enjoyed today's watercolor video. Thanks so much for joining me. Please consider sharing the joy by liking this video and subscribing to this channel. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.